This is part four of an ongoing series, No Retreat the Russian Front, one of the best games I ever played. Welcome to Legendary Tactics. It's now turn five, spring 1942, which is another tough year for the Russian side, uh, where all they need to do is hang on for dear life. So 1942 begins, and after checking uh, supply and grabbing his cards, the Romanian unit comes back, and he gets his cadre as well. And uh, this is the first long winter turn. And he basically begins to sweep around and takes Kalin in, which makes me nervous. I don't want him cutting off Moscow. It's making retreats a little more difficult, that's for sure. And the Panzers in the south uh, move in and take a city unopposed. And in the center, they kind of rearrange the Panzers up there. Now, he actually spent two cards to improve that Panzer unit the third panzer and uh, he's got a few attacks for me the attack in the center and the attack in the south so he gets a counter blow in, on the attack in the south which I can live with uh, he also sorry he also attacked Kharkov which uh, resulted in no effect and the attack in the center unfortunately uh, destroys Army West and he ends up in the destroyed units box and he advances ever closer to Moscow so the Russians begin their turn and we're immediately hit with a card that forces us to discard a random card which is not good every card that the Russians have in the early game matters so much every positive event or being able to spend a card to bring a unit back uh, can be quite a game changer. So I grab my cards and uh, my very first move is to discard a card to flip Moscow and hopefully those extra uh, entrenchments will allow me to keep that city safe from German hands. And uh, just with them sweeping through the north they're virtually unopposed I'm a little bit worried. But I'm going to spend a couple cards and bring some units back. And then I'm hit with a card that forces me to unfortunately return one of those replaced units. And so looking at the situation, uh, I think the unit in the south is more expendable. Uh, Moscow is so crucial to uh, winning this game so I'll just have to take my chances. I do have that unit in the reserve box as well that I can use if necessary to shore up that part of the front. So I declared my attack in the north and the German player dropped a card to uh, put a counter blow on their massive panzer stack so I have to attack with the southwest army there. Uh, so I can use shock markers for both but uh, in the north uh, I've got hopefully a good chance here and I managed to luck out and roll a five, get an exchange. So I lose my unit, it goes to the destroyed units box, but I'm, I'm wearing down those German forces. If you look at how many how many forces, uh, how many German units are flipped over, um, we're actually making them pay a bit of a price to uh, advance as far as they have. It's very expensive to flip those over. Uh, the counter blow in the middle uh, is not a good odds and uh, even with a shock uh, marker um, unfortunately I roll a counter attack which is probably the worst I would roll the two so it's worst possible roll in a way because it uh, potentially sets me up for a bad result here now, as it turns out the counter blow or the counter attack ended up uh, not having any result so uh, I'm a happy man I was very uh, lucky there and uh, so I'm going to call it a day and finish my turn. Uh, basically, uh, just need to remove the disorganized marker off the uh, unit uh, just north of Moscow. And I'm going to put my reserve unit back in the city there in Varnez. And uh, I think that's the best spot just because uh, I'm protected a little bit by the river and a little bit by the city. 
and uh, it's a little bit better than being out in the open but I still maintain that those zones of control even though the lines buckled a bit I'm keeping a, a, a line together so the next turn begins turn six and um, we have some you know good reinforcements coming up over the next uh, few turns uh, things are looking a little bit more hopeful um, we have uh, uh, the upgrades as well also beginning uh, now the German player checks for sudden death and uh, he is well short which is uh, good to see you can see the T6 uh, he needed to be um, you know past this line basically in order to uh, in order to get a win by sudden death and I managed to stave that off which is good um, but as I said with the upgrades beginning that is going to change as my units get more you know more and more powerful it's going to be um, you know excellent now it is a mud turn as well which is great uh, for me the next three turns are going to be the tough ones because uh, of the sunny weather um, but and he only has uh, one uh, blitz marker um, which he can use which is um, which limits him a fair bit now he gets the um, the second Hungarian unit and uh, he also gets the ability to um, use the trains uh, again which is um, you know big deal for him obviously um, he checks his supply and grabs his cards and um, he's going to place his uh, second Hungarian um, back in Lublin um, probably is going to end up in the rail movement box shortly anyway uh, but uh, then he begins sweeping around and uh, that move right there is very decisive for the Leningrad uh, outpost it basically cuts uh, supply uh, so I'm not going to be able to um, defend uh, Leningrad much longer um, so it's unfortunately it looks like Leningrad's going to uh, fall before too long unless I can uh, magically free up some forces to uh, to save it um, and he's going to move in to really make it uh, uh, make it hurt and then uh, he moves his uh, Hungarian unit into the rail movement box so in the south he begins to move on Stalino and Rostov and uh, really put the pressure on my line. So the third Panzer moves in and then uh, he reconsiders and just re you know uses that unit to hold the line. Not sure what uh, affected his decision but the odds aren't amazing you know for him to attack that reserve. I mean behind a river and behind a, a, a city it may not be you know really uh, doable to uh, to attack there. So now he declares his attacks. <clears throat> There's going to be the one attack in the center and then the counter blow near Stalino. So I don't have any cards, so uh, I can't do any counter blows. So zooming in here on the first attack, we'll take a look at what happens. Zooming in on this attack first, we have uh, 16 on 4, I believe. Uh, so that's going to be uh, pretty tough for me. It's 4 on 1. And he's not going to use his... Uh, his uh, marker, uh, the uh, shock marker on that one, um, but instead he sends that unit into the uh, uh, def destroyed units box. It actually should go in the dis uh, defender shattered box and I'll correct that in an upcoming uh, turn. But uh, for the meantime, uh, luckily this is mud and so he can only advance into that space. If it was a clear weather uh, hex I'd uh, be looking at Stalino and Rostov both falling and uh, he would be moving into the uh, the oil fields uh, without much resistance so glad that it's a uh, the weather's held him up again that's uh, you know great luck on my part now near Moscow uh, it's a 16 on 5 which is 3 on 1 he's going to use the blitz marker there uh, that cancels out the forest and rolls a 4 which uh, is a defender retreat. So preserve the unit, but I'm, he's literally going to be walking right up to the gates of Moscow now. And uh, that is a bit worrisome. So now it's the removals and detraining. Uh, he still has the, uh, the Hungarian unit um, here, and he's going to detrain him into the city, starting with D that I cannot pronounce. Um, so Stalino and Rostov are very much uh, being threatened right now. Um, Sevastopol he seems to have bypassed, which is which is fine 
fine by me. Sevastopol is a little bit tough to take anyway with the swamp and everything there, uh, but it is it is doable that uh, he has to commit some time and some resources to making that happen, and I don't think he is thinking about that. He's thinking about moving through, taking Stalingrad and the oil fields and ending this game early. All right, so here things are. And it's my turn. I'm hoping uh, that I can do something. My line is looking very tattered at the moment, uh, but I'm hoping that um, you know by spending a few cards and and uh, reconstituting my army a little bit, I'll stand a chance. I also have the ability to upgrade uh, for the first time this turn. That's going to make a big difference. So uh, first of all, I correct that uh, mistake from the previous turn where Volkov could have uh, retreated and should have been in the shattered units box, and then I grab some cards. And I play a card, which uh, gives me the ability to um, pick up two cards. Um, so it um, gives me a little bit more firepower. Uh, checking supply, Leningrad, unfortunately, is, uh, is out of supply. So that's not a good thing. Um, so I'm going to do an upgrade. And the one that jumped out to me the most was uh, Tula. Just holding on to Moscow um, now becomes a bit more of a, you know, a, a you know, decisive unit in terms of, uh, you know, being able to counter blow. Um, I think it can make quite a difference. So I'll do that for now. It also gives me a, a big strength upgrade as well. So um, other than that, I've got to do what I can to, um, I, I unstick um, uh, Leningrad, unfortify Leningrad as well so that I can um, attack and hopefully break the uh, the encirclement. So after uh, playing another card which uh, allowed me to pick up a card from the discard I believe, uh, the card didn't display correctly again, um, I begin to discard and get some replacements uh, back as well as the reinforcements that are scheduled. Um, and I'm going to reinforce Stalino, um, reinforce Rostov and Gorky and uh, so I've got, you know, some forces there, but man, it's looking pretty lean in the south. I've got to be very careful, uh, very careful there. So I'm going to um, replace another unit, put him in Stalingrad, and hopefully with a bit of movement here, um, I can, um, you know, get things in a much better spot. So first off, I uh, move the uh, unit from... Um, Stalingrad into the rail movement box. It gives me the flexibility I need, and um, I move. So first off, I move the unit from Stalingrad into the rail movement box. That gives me the flexibility that I need uh, here to um, adjust depending on how things settle settle out. I'll, I mean, I'm probably going to put him in the south because that's where he. Uh, is most needed, but uh, then I'm going to begin to advance on the German troops uh, just to, you know, hold that line. Again, that that zone of control, um, you know, ring that goes around each of these uh, units is is kind of a an extended uh, shield. It makes it uh, tougher, tougher and tougher for um, units to get around, and that's what I'm hoping to do is is to just basically make it impossible for them to get behind Moscow because that would be a disaster. Um, then I'm going to fall back a bit here, uh, just trying to you know form a, um, a line that's going to hold. Again, just I mean, I know the game's called No Retreat, but sometimes you have to uh, set things up so you're not just going to be overwhelmed um, with counter blows uh, and just try and, you know, again, hold that line. I'm going to do a, a desperate attack uh, out of uh, Leningrad, uh, see if I can break the, the lines there. And since I have a little bit of strength uh, there in the north, I'm going to see if I can take back Kalinin as well. And uh, that's uh, where, you know, the, probably the best I'm going to do. Uh, at the moment, I'm going to wait and see if there's any counter blows. And so the counter blows land. We've got one right uh, on the doorstep of Moscow, that giant panzer uh, stack, and in uh, Stalino, a fairly substantial stack there as well. So um, this is going to be this is going to be tight. We'll start with the Battle of Leningrad, and that is my poor out of supply uh, <laughs> out of supply beleaguered troop, just hoping to get a lucky roll here. 
Um, so uh, we've got uh, basically a one-on-one, -on -one, um, which ends up in a counter blow, which is not helpful at all. That uh, unit is unfortunately going to die out of supply, uh, which is not what I wanted, but that is how it's going to go. Next up is my battle for Kalanin. Um, we're going to see uh, what we can do here. It's a, a four on four, uh, basically shifted once for the city. And uh, luckily I get a, a decent roll. It's a counter blow. Um, so not the most amazing uh, result, but it'll do. It, uh, it creates potentially an interesting situation uh, for next turn. Now the counter blow on the Panzer stack, which I'm going to have to use Northwest for. It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> so uh, basically it's uh, a three on 12, um, you know, which is, uh, yeah, it's just not good odds. It's going to be one one on three. It's a counterattack as uh, you might have expected. So we'll see what happens there in a minute. And the battle for Stalino. There's a counter blow there. Um, the odds aren't great. It's a uh, you know four on ten, uh, <clears throat> but uh, we get a decent roll and get a five. It's a counter blow, so that uh, is going to create an interesting situation for uh, next turn. The counter attack from that giant Panzer stack on northwest results in a defender retreat. Luckily, I've got a narrow corridor to uh, <laughs> to use to get out of there, and. Uh, so I duck behind Moscow there and hide uh, for now. And with that, poor Leningrad uh, dies out of supply and uh, has to be removed to the surrendered units box. That gives the German another victory point, and I feel sad. Just removing the disorganized uh, markers on the units there and I have my unit to detrain and after looking at a few different possibilities uh, it's a big risk but I really want to make sure to preserve Moscow I'm gonna put him uh, right close to Moscow and see if I can't lock that down and hope for the best in the south so this ends turn six and uh, I've lost Leningrad unfortunately I feel like I maybe was a bit sloppy there um, but I've built quite the defense around Moscow and the line extending down you know to Rostov uh, is is looking a bit thinner down there but uh, you know we've still we've, you know the forces that are facing uh, those units are a little less substantial also so we um, hopefully are going to be able to uh, hold the line from this point we're running a little bit short of ground uh, but that's why I, I, from this point forward I really don't think um, I can fall back. So it's no retreat from here on out. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Legendary Tactics and I look forward to putting together part five for you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.